This is a revision video focused on the structure graphite. So here's a picture of the structure graphite. You can see the key aspects of it are that it has three strong covalent bonds per carbon atom, that it is composed of layers of carbon atoms, and that between those layers of carbon atoms, there are only weak forces of attraction. These points will be expanded upon later. First of all, I'm going to give you an introduction just focusing on the general uh, aspects of the pro uh, of the structure itself. First of all, what kind of structure is it? It would be classified as a giant structure. This means it has a regular repeating 3D pattern. The structure itself is a giant covalent structure, and this tells us more about its bonding. The bonding present inside the structure is covalent bonding. This means there are shared pairs of electrons between their atoms. Then I'm going to consider the various properties of graphite, starting off with its melting point. Now, graphite has an exceptionally high melting point, and actually, usually upon heating, sublimes, so it doesn't even have a melting point per se, but for devil's advocate, let's say it does. Let's say it has a high melting point. Why would that be? Well, that would be because each carbon atom has the capacity to form three strong covalent bonds per carbon atom. Therefore, throughout the giant covalent structure that is graphite, there will be many strong covalent bonds, multiple strong covalent bonds throughout this giant covalent structure. These strong covalent bonds will require a large amount of heat energy or thermal energy to overcome or break these bonds. Therefore, it's quite hard to melt a graphite structure. Secondly, quite unusually for a non-metal like, uh, like graphite, uh, like carbon, um, it conducts electricity. This allotrope, this form of carbon, conducts electricity. That's, rare, that's rather unusual for non-metals. Why? Well, again, the bonding is the key aspect here. Returning to the previous point, each carbon atom forms three strong covalent bonds. Therefore, every carbon atom inside the graphite structure has one free outermost delocalized electron. That word delocalized means it has the capacity to move or flow freely throughout the entire graphite structure, all the way through this giant covalent structure. Therefore, it's able to conduct an electrical current. So, graphite conducts electricity as a solid because it has three delocalized electrons, one per carbon atom, and there are many millions of carbon atoms inside the structure. This means that these delocalized electrons are free to flow or move and conduct an electrical current. Finally, again, an unusual property of graphite is that it's soft. So why would graphite be soft? Well, it's all to do with the fact that it has these layers. Inside those layers, there are strong covenant bonds. So internally, inside the layers, there are strong covenant bonds between the carbon atoms, and they're being held very strongly. But importantly, between the covenantly bonded layers of carbon atoms, there are only weak forces of attraction highlighted by these blue dotted lines here. These weak forces of attraction between the layers of carbon atoms are very easily overcome with a small amount of force. This will allow layers of the, uh, the layers of carbon atoms to slide over each other very, very easily and actually be removed entirely. So it's possible to flake off or take away layers of, of, of carbon atoms from graphite because there are only weak forces of attraction between the layers of covalently bonded carbon atoms and they can be taken away or, or slide over each other very, very easily. This brings us on finally to the uses of graphite based upon these properties. Uh, the first one uh, I can allude to before I talk about this one here is that uh, they're very good lubricants. So graphite has a uh, soft uh, is a soft structure, almost a slimy consistency when you when you feel the outside of a piece of graphite, and that's because the layers of graphite are sliding off into your fingers. So it's a very good lubricant. It's very good at providing a slippery surface. Secondly, that would explain the function of these things: pencils. Pencils are made of graphite. The internal core of a pencil is graphite. And again, when you rub a pencil along a piece of paper, what you're doing is uh, taking off layers of carbon atoms. So you are allowing layers of carbon atoms to slide over each other very easily and be left on the paper because there's only weak force of attraction between those layers of covalently bonded carbon atoms. Finally, the final function you should be aware of are, is in one of these things. This is an electrolytic cell used to electrolyze uh, solutions uh, or molten substances possibly, probably solutions most likely. And the important thing is these things at the base here are the graphite electrodes. 
they would conduct a current. So if a volt, a difference in voltage was, was placed across these two electrodes, then a current would flow. It's because uh, graphite is a very good conductor of electricity. That's because it has uh, many, many free localized electrons, one per carbon atom, which are able to flow throughout the graphite structure, meaning it can conduct electricity very well. Hopefully this is useful uh, for revision, and I look forward to talking to you in the next video.